The Goat House is back with my biggest takeaways, thoughts, and what we learned from week 11 so far, what it could mean for some of these teams moving forward as well. Let's take a look at what I got. One of my biggest takeaways from week 11 comes from Thursday Night Football, the Eagles in their defense. First off, is this one of the better defenses in all of football? showing what they did to the commanders and what they've done to the Bengals and just in recent weeks. And I'd say yes. And is to take it a step further. Is it, could it be an elite defense? It very well could be. I mean, the coverage uh, on this defense and the motor, I mean, night and day difference, the energy, the hustle, the coverage skills, night and day difference from right now to the end of last year, kind of proving that defensive coaching is, we know it has to be important, but it is insanely important. Vic Fangio doing a really good job with these guys. Quinia Mitchell, one of the better corners in football. He's a rookie. Cooper DeGene, a rookie, lighting it up. I mean, the whole secondary looks good. The linebackers and the Kobe Dean is really getting going as well. Uh, pass rush is solid, uh, but that's actually not even the brightest part about this defense. The interior very solid, though. Jalen Carter uh, really standing out. Plays that he made, but plays he's, he's creating for his teammates. So Eagles defense is something the offense got going really late in this game. It's crazy that they're more of a defensive team. I mean, just think if the offense can get going, and it's been going, but if it can get going a little more consistently, how scary this Eagles team could be. So that's kind of my takeaway looking, you know, uh, moving through the rest of the season, what to watch for the Eagles here. So definitely a big-time team to watch after their victory against the Commanders. And I do have a takeaway, but sort more, more of a question for the Washington Commanders from that Thursday Night Football game as well. And that is, will they? Will there be more of a game plan out there because of this game, but just because there's a lot more on tape for them going forward? Or was it just the Eagles defense being that good? Was it just one game? Because this is the worst performance from the Commanders this year on offense. They, nothing really going for Jaden Daniels. Didn't really throw well. Didn't look fully right. Uh, couldn't scramble. Even the design runs didn't look right. Terry McLaurin couldn't get open. And the reason I bring this up, is there more of a game plan? It's more of a game plan for everyone. But two things. Number one, Cliff Kingsbury looking at him in the Cardinals days. Every year the Cardinals start off amazing. I mean, there was one year they were the best team in football. And then it kind of ended the season in the playoffs. They got figured out. There was a game plan the next year. Sort of the same thing. They kind of got figured out a lot earlier. And it just seemed to be that offense because it was so fast. There's a scrambling quarterback. It's more of a college-like offense. It, it was tough to deal with. It was tough to game plan for early. And then you plug in Jaden Daniels. New quarterback. Teams don't know how to game plan for him. He can scramble. He can run. I've been wondering this all year. Is there going to be a point where this kind of gets figured out? You know, and it looked like it in this game, but it's a question right now because it's one game. Eagles defense might be for real, but that is something to watch. And that's where I love the direction of this team, but will they be built for the playoffs because the inexperience and the predictability and they're more, you know, everyone really gets game plan for. It's just about like what Mahomes being better than the game plan, overcoming it like in the playoffs. Josh Allen kind of doing the same thing, Joe Burrow. So that's what's going to separate, you know, can the commanders figure it out or not? So that's something I'm keeping an eye on here. And it really, and I've been wondering it and it kind of gets brought up a little bit more here, um, you know, going into or after this week, this week 11 game Thursday night football. You got to take away for the Detroit Lions after the snot pounding that they gave to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And you and a lot of people are going to go, they beat the Jags. You know, Mac Jones, they're done. The Jags are done. They beat the Jags. And, and people will go, yeah, they impressive. They beat their ass. But I mean, they, unlike most teams, they kept going through the game, through the game, the whole, you know, they tried to pile it on, on them. But I'd say forget all that. You look at the NFL each week, even good teams and the Chiefs were undefeated until today. They were close with a bunch of teams. We saw the Vikings, who are an eight and two team right now, play the Jags last week. They slipped up. You know that game was interesting. It, 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 the Lions just destroying them as they should, and some just just tells me they're legit. I, I know it's the people are going to go. It's the Jaguars. How could you tell anything from that? But that they don't slip up. I mean, they slipped up last week and they still won. But they could go full go. They're not going to play down to their competition. Just shows me that they're a real juggernaut team. So that game, this game, even though it's the Jags, it meant something to me. For you know, to me, like going looking at them the rest of the year, what type of team they are. So I love that outing, not just because the score, but for the Detroit Lions, they're getting everyone involved as well. And a quick takeaway for the Jags is the question: It's it's got to be it for Doug Peterson and maybe more. They got a bye coming up after that embarrassing game. I know there's excuses because Mac Jones is in there, but. Just embarrassing job, not just from the coaching staff, but from Balky, their GM as well. 
I think they at least fire Doug Peterson. I'm expecting it. I think I think a lot of guys could go, multiple coaches, and I think Trent Bulky, their GM, could go as well. So that's something I'm watching. As I, they wouldn't wait like during the buy. I think it's going to come either now or early early this week. I would imagine. So something I'm really keeping an eye on after that snot pounding there that they got handed. And then for the Colts, the, the takeaway is well, it's more than just Anthony Richardson, but Anthony Richardson. I thought he played his best game as an NFL quarterback, which is awesome. He had something to prove. I loved it. You know, I love what he was able to do and uh, the toughness that he showed in this game. He threw the ball very, very well, too, you know, late in this game, throughout this game, but even late in this game, very, very much clutch. I think one bad play where he held on to the ball and uh, pressure came straight at him and then he fumbled the ball. And at that point, it's like, mm, the Jets got control of this game. But him playing that way and showing yeah, this guy, again, he's still got potential and being back in there and not uh, getting down. I love that. So um, really, I was hyped about Richardson coming into this game. Felt like it was a really good matchup for him and he proved that right and then he proved you know, some people wrong or prove that he has something to prove. Like, he could play. He still has upside. He's the guy. So, and the Colts kind of showing again, like, what they've done this year. They, they're going to be in games. And now that they got a little bit more fire, probably, you know, looking at what Kenny Moore said at the end of last game, after the game, guys aren't bringing enough energy. You know, maybe, maybe they're going to get going now um, after this clutch clutch victories so that's something to watch the rest of the year and it's, it's just a big positive game for Anthony Richardson you just love to see it the Steelers taking down the Ravens I mean they have to be on here because it's a massive W right beating a division rival kind of taking staying staying ahead in that division that tough division the AFC North so it's a massive win but I mean my takeaway we talked about the Eagles defense the Steelers defense and we kind of already thought it but it's got to be the best defense in football the way they're playing the way they they played against that Ravens offense and they always seem to game plan well and play play well against Lamar Jackson and it continues you know just continue to play their brand of football it seems like they do every year and some that's a difference right now this team feels more like a team that actually can win in the playoffs compared to the past years and I, I question you know I've been saying it will, will the offense keep it up is there gonna be more of a game plan for it and, and because Russ was fairly new and there could be and they slowed down a little I mean they moved the ball Najee being tough Pickens was productive uh they probably could have put up more points but it all you know Boswell was elite today it all came kind of come down came down to him but and if Russ doesn't throw that interception you know in the end zone is a bad one because even a field goal was huge at that point but so offense could be a little better executing but that's kind of my takeaway. Best defense in football, proving it week after week and more of a test this week. I know they haven't been tested. That's people's kind of negative with them. Like, yeah, they look really good, but they haven't been tested a ton of times. Not really a flaw. So they prove that to people here and that it does feel like they're that that Steelers brand from the past and some. They possibly can win playoff games in could they do more? Could they be extra sneaky here? So good luck for the Steelers this week. Saints beating up the Browns. I mean, maybe it was a little closer than the score showed, but two wins in a row, two and zero oh for Darren Rizzi. It brings up a lot of questions and it brings up some, some key takeaways here. Two things like, is Rizzi the guy? Like, is that the guy? And that kind of puts you in a tough spot because hiring interim coaches after they start, you know, get a spark doesn't seem to work out and that we're going to have they're going to have to solve that problem, not right now, in the near future. But it, it, but he looks good. He's fired up. He's got the team fired up. So it's kind of a – it's almost going to feel like a win-win. You keep him, it looks pretty good, but how will it pan out? And if you go move away from him and go someone else, it's like, yeah, I mean, history shows the interim coach doesn't really work out if you re, you, you sign you hire them long term. And the other thing is, I mean, could they come back, the Saints, two in a row – the, the NFC South looks pretty bad right now. The Bucks could get healthy and turn around. The Falcons are losing. They do not look like a great football team right now. Uh, the Saints beat them last week as well. So, uh, do I guess we cannot rule out the Saints. I think that would – Olave's got to come back after the IR. They're trying to shut them down for the season. But now that they're playing right now, MVS looks good for them. So, yeah, we're keeping our eyes on Rizzi and the Saints and what they could do. Can they make a comeback in the struggling NFC South? A quick one here. The Patriots did lose the game, but my takeaway from the I mean, for the Rams, I thought Stafford played well, but you know, and it was good that they got a victory. Puka was awesome too. There's no like real anything we learned from them. Patriots just just Drake man. I'm not surprised. That was a big Drake May guy. A lot a lot of people were, but 
Drake May's the key. They got one in Drake May. It really feels like it. And he still has that turnover potential. We knew that. We knew that about him going in. And we see guys like Mahomes and Josh Allen. These guys could turn the ball over, and if they can make up for it, it's worth it. Drake May's that type of guy where he can make up for it. He can make those big plays. He was awesome in this game. He is clutch on third down. He was at North Carolina, too, with his legs and with his arm. Uh, being able to roll out, understand, read pressure, feel it, roll out, make a play. He is he has so much potential. He has so much potential. And if you're a Patriots fan, you got to be jacked up. And there is a big, significant gap for this year. We're not even through the first year. Jaden Daniels, the rest of the rookie quarterbacks. But these other guys are heating up. And I still believe, I still trust the process and my evaluations. And I think Drake May is actually ahead of where I thought he was. I think he'll be three years from now. I think we'll be talking about him hopefully sooner, but as the best quarterback from this class, I think in the Patriots got to build it right. But I, I do think he has that potential and we're seeing it. And I think we're seeing it ahead of schedule, given that they have the worst or a bottom two offense line and look at the weapons they have. So it's a lot, lo- it's a loss. They're not really winning football, needing to win football games this, 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 uh, this year right now, but it's, it's a win for the future in this game. It's just a Big t- good looks for Drake May. You perfect world. He could he could uh, take care of the ball a little bit better, but I-, I love what I'm seeing from the kid. I think he's ahead of schedule. Like I said, watch out for those Denver Broncos. I mean, they've been a- they've been playing better than people expected this year, but now they're kicking up another notch. Bo Nix, uh, he definitely played his best game of his his uh, first year career here of his career in his first year here. I should say, very much impressed with him. I'm impressed with his. I mean, a lot of things right now, but the ability to throw on the run and just read the field, read the pressure, read the field while doing it, that's what stands out. Like, he's significantly getting better, which means the the weapons are getting better. I mean, Mims had a good game, good game, but uh, Javante Williams had a really good game, too. And the team is getting better, therefore the team's getting better. This was a defensive team for most this year, and the offense, you kind of see it. They had moments here and there. You know, moments here and there, but you could see the offense is getting better. Bo Nix is getting better. The offense, getting, everyone's getting better. They're becoming much more of a balanced team than everyone really fully understands right now. I know the Falcons don't have the best defense, but this was a showing. And the other thing, the defense has been great earlier in the year, and it's kind of the run defense has been really good. And you kind of, and they almost have all the same players for the most part. It seems like in the back of my mind, I'm kind of waiting for that run defense to kind of go back to end of like how, how could they go from one of the worst to one of the better ones, but. The defense is just keeping it up. It is a really, and they played a good offense today, and they shut them down. So, a lot of takeaways from the Broncos here. A lot of good looks at their defense is legit. Offense is getting better. Bo Nix is, I should say, the Bo, Bo Nix is getting better. So the offense is getting better. They're clicking better. It's it's a s- smooth team right now, and they are becoming much more of a balanced team. And that's pretty dangerous. That's pretty dangerous if you can kind of trust both sides of the ball. It's very dangerous, actually. So very. Very excited for the Broncos right now. And the team, the Broncos, dominated the Falcons. I have some takeaways, some, some, some thoughts, some thoughts for the Falcons here. And they're supposed to be progressing, and they're not. You know, they were new right away, and they were starting to get better. Like, new, I mean, new coaches, new players everywhere, new quarterback. They're supposed to be progressing. I really expected them to because they had a good bright spot, like not week one, but right after that, and it looked promising, and... My biggest issue for them is not even that. It, I can't trust this team. That's my takeaway. That's how I summarize it. I can't trust this team. Yes, can they be a good? Yes, they could be a good team. They could. They could beat anyone. They can lose to anyone. That's sort of. That's kind of how I feel about the Falcons. But I can't trust them because this defense could get beat every week. They can create some turnovers because they have guys like Jesse Bates. But they can get beat. You can throw on them. You can definitely run on them. You can out physical them. They can't really get a pass rush. So what are they? They're an offensive team. But when offensive teams aren't fully consistent offensive teams like the Falcons, got problems. So I just it's a team we believe is a playoff team, and they they might let the division slip away. It's a good thing they beat the Bucks twice, but I still think they're the favorites as they should be. But you can't trust them in the playoffs where you have to play your best against the best every single week, and you're you know your defense is probably not going to show up. Reem Morris defenses are usually better in that stage, but I don't I'm not really trusting it. And if you can't trust your offense to show up against good defenses or every single week, it's like, how do I, how, I can't trust this team. And I think there's going to be a stage at still late in the season where they, if they uh, flip a switch and they really progress because again, they are fairly new. I, I still think it's coming, but I don't have the trust, the faith that I had at one point. If they, 
there's really bad matchups for them, like like the Broncos. They play a solid, a team that's a really solid defense that's physical on offense. That is a brutal matchup. And there's playoffs. There's a lot of those teams. Seahawks are an interesting one. Interesting takeaways. I honestly, part of me is going, how the hell did they win that game? Like they were and when that final drive. I'm like. I can't believe they're even in this game. Not that they were getting like destroyed or outplayed by that much, but it just didn't really feel like, you know, Geno wasn't playing that great. They couldn't get anything going on offense besides one drive, and the Niners were moving the ball. Jennings getting yards after the, after the catch, yards after contact. McCaffrey running the ball well. Purdy scrambling. I, like it just did not feel like the Seahawks had a shot. Then they go and win the game. So I mean, my takeaway, I mean, that's a massive win in a battle in the NFC West. I mean, putting themselves in that position with the Niners. You know, and, tr- and it's a battle in that division. All those teams are right in the same boat. I think there's a couple that are better than others right now. Obviously, the Niners looking like the worst right now. But just a massive win. But does that clutch win do that? Do something for them? My, my big takeaway here is kind of a positive and a negative. The negative part is it feels like you, they can't get the offense and the defense in the same. Like, they can't be both playing great at the same time. And that and that's kind of been an issue for them for quite a few years here since like they've been out of their complete prime, you know, prime rust days, elite defense days. Uh, that's kind of been a common theme for them. But they're kind of on the brink of getting there. I feel like if at the same time, like the defense could win them games because they kind of held the Niners in a way. Like the, the defense has playmakers; they have a good defensive coach. The defense can win them games, and the offense can be clutch and. Air it out. JSN getting better and better. DK, DK can hit the hit the big plays. Kenneth Walker could get going. Like they they have the capabilities of winning with just offense and winning with just defense, and that's re- a really good sign with teams. They just can't be on the same page at the same time. If they and they're fairly new, right? The whole new coaching staff has a completely different system on offense. So if they can click and get those sides of the ball on the, at the on the same page at the same time they actually could be very very scary so maybe there's a boost after this clutch win here Gino has been either like insanely good or insanely bad at times this year it's maybe insanely is a little strong on the good side but hot and cold one extreme to another but that it got me fired up for them you know uh, you know I'm not necessarily was I don't have anybody to root for in that game but it just get fired up for teams with, with uh Sometimes you kind of feel that energy after a clutch win. So that that was that was big for them. So it's a team I have my eyes on. And the, the reason of can they click and on the same page, both sides at the same time, because then they can be very, very sneaky. 49ers, man, they, they, they cannot close. They let games slip away. The special teams is awful. The defense was really good last week, even though they kind of let the Bucks get back in the game. But uh, overall, they impressed. I'm like, this is where the defense goes. And and a part of this game, it was like, yeah, the defense is playing great, but they let it, they're, just, they're inconsistent on defense too. Is it another team I can't really trust? And the offense moved the ball. Like, you look at the way they moved the ball, the way they were out fizzling Seattle. you think they would have way more points than they had. So that's an issue for me. I know they're, like, very capable of doing more. They're showing that. So I guess that's a positive. But every week we go, all right, this is where the Niners go. This is where they go. And you think maybe they're going to go, and then no, they don't. And it this is my big takeaway, you know, from, from, um, from this week where it's a big learning week, how, you know, really big week, tough matchups. And we're kind of, teams are kind of clicking in the, in the back of their minds, you know, playoff stretch, you know, getting the playoffs home stretch here. And the takeaway here is they're just not the same team. It's not the same 49ers team. Like, can they be better? Can they, can they figure it out and get good? Cause I don't know if they're that great right now. Certainly. Yes, they can. But this is just not the 49ers team. This 49ers team would not have won those playoff games last year. Like, because the last year one's better. Basically, it's, it's, we're so used to the same Niners team. This is not it, and it's for several reasons. I know they still have a lot of the talent. They, they have the talent still. T- the skill, the talent's not it is there, but it's it's weird. It's weird seeing it, and we got to just kind of face reality at this point with them. So that's the big takeaway for the Niners. And they pretty much had to put the Bills on this video because they get a massive statement win against the undefeated Chiefs. And, I mean, that's really the takeaway. They get a, they get a big-time win. They're serious. I could see this team winning a Super Bowl, contending. They're, they're legit. Nothing new, really, so that's why I don't have too many takeaways. But, I mean, looking at that game, I thought the Bills were just playing simple better in all phases in the Chiefs. And they scored 30 points. That's big. I thought Josh Allen was the better quarterback. I thought that they had the better offensive line. I thought they had the better running backs. I thought they had the 
they were just better on offense, they were better on defense, they were just better. Does that mean they're going to be better all the way through at the end? It doesn't necessarily mean that. I think they have a decent shot, you know, and it's just a big win. I know it's at home what's going to happen if it's in Kansas City, but trying to get that home field advantage if in case you got to play that one, in case you got to play anybody. But that rematch, that, that could be huge, though, uh, for the Buffalo Bills who look like a juggernaut team. So um, very much impressed with them. I mean, that's... We didn't really, I didn't really learn anything new. That's most of this video. This I kind of tweaked this video this week. It's just, what did we learn? What does it mean going forward? Uh, we didn't really learn anything new from the Bills, but because I kind of already thought that about the Bills, and we picked them to win this game. And but I was impressed with the amount of points they scored, and I was impressed that they were they. I'm trying to find where the 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 Chiefs were better than them. Like a so there's probably like one specific position, maybe, but I don't know. I don't know if that even exists. I, I thought. The Bills were just better everywhere, um, you know, in this game. So that's obviously uh, massive. But the big thing is getting this massive victory. How about the Chargers taking down the Bengals in a very entertaining game on Sunday Night Football? The Chargers needed this one. It got interesting. They almost let it slip away. They blew a comeback. But they needed to win this game. Haven't played the best competition this year. So we knew they, we knew they were a good football team, that they were playing good football. But to be able to go out and beat a good football team, beat a really good offense, I think was huge. And it helps us kind of believe in them a little bit more going forward. The play calling was a little odd in this game. The lack of runs, which is kind of the opposite of Harbaugh and Roman, uh, the lack of J.K. Dobbins, and he had a couple explosive runs in the second half that they finally kind of were giving the ball a little bit more. But, yeah, showing that even though the defense kind of went south a little bit in the second half, showing they can win with defense, they can win throwing the ball, they can win possibly running the ball as well. Just a big statement win win for them, and it's a team to kind of keep an eye on as more than just a, a team that's going to beat up on bad teams. You know, can this team be a playoff team? Can they win in the playoffs? Are they built for that? So an interesting team to watch after they get a statement win against the Bengals in Sunday Night Football. And the Bengals drop to 4-7. This is a much better team than that record. They could have at least three more wins, so... I, this, to me, my takeaway, this this team's got to find a way to get in the playoffs because this is a team, you know, I don't expect them to win the Super Bowl probably because their defense, because they can't close out games right now and their defense isn't, you know, maybe it isn't good enough. I do feel like it's getting better, though. I, I know it wasn't great in the game against Chargers. It was better in the second half for sure. But it's too explosive, too good of a team. Just think about them matched up against other AFC playoff teams. Chiefs. Well, they already played them and they had them. I mean, they could beat the Chiefs. Would we pick them to beat the Chiefs? Maybe most people wouldn't, but they could beat them. And they could play against the Bills. We know they could play against the Chargers. So it's one of those teams that can pretty much beat anybody, but lose to almost anybody. I wouldn't expect them to lose to, you know, I guess a handful of teams at the very bottom. But that's why I, we need this team in the playoffs. They have an MVP candidate, Joe Burrow. They have one of the best offensive players in football right now in Jamar Chase. They have maybe the best defensive player so far this year, one of them in Trey Hendrickson. I know you need more than just the star players there, those star players, but they have the talent. It's kind of a shame that, that they're not getting more wins. They're not closing out games. I don't really think it's a Zach Taylor issue. I don't really have a big problem with Zach Taylor, but yeah, I mean, I guess it falls on him if they can't close out these games. I had an issue with the, the ending of the first Ravens game, how he handled overtime, did not have an issue with the last Ravens game going for two, I don't have an issue with that. But it's a tough one because this team is too good to be four and seven. They're too good to miss the playoffs. You could argue the defense isn't good enough. It might be true, but I, look at them, how they stack up with other AFC teams. They could beat them. They could play with them. So this team need, just needs to find a way to close out games and make the playoffs. We need them in the playoffs. So did this video a little differently this time. Just had some key takeaways as we kind of approach the playoff run type of this season uh so let me know your guys thoughts if you have any more takeaways but we got loads of content on the way for week 12 and uh, you know still have that monday night video for for week 11 there but that's gonna do it thanks for watching goodbye